So we've managed to simulate the firing of a cannonball and its trajectory. But we've got the cannonball going straight through the wall. We're going to do some some basic collision detection. If you go back into your game loop layout, scroll down up just past your uh, update. I've already created some collision detection methods. I'll just cut and paste them here. First one is hit the wall. So you could copy this one across. It continually updates the distance to the wall by using the height variable we got from our callback. So it's callback height variable here, minus the current cannonball y position. I've got some log, log variables here so you can look at the values as the simulation is running. And in our if statement, we're saying that if the distance to the wall is less than the radius of the circle of the cannonball, so three density pixels, and the distance to the wall is greater than zero, so it's on the correct side of the wall, we're gonna detect a hit. And at that point, we're gonna hit, immediately set our Y velocity component to zero, and also our acceleration to zero, if it isn't already set to zero. And we do the same for uh, detecting hitting the floor, something similar. If you copy, could pause the video and copy that across. The distance to the floor is just the cannonball X position. So, we define a collision as if the distance to the floor is less than the radius of the ball, three density pixels, and if the distance to the floor is greater than zero, but we only want to detect the ball on the way down. So that means the velocity in the S component has to be less than zero. So that's why we have this here. If all those conditions are satisfied, we're just gonna log that uh, it's hit the floor and then set the velocity values to zero and set the X acceleration to zero. And because we've hit the floor, we don't have to continue looping. Uh, at this point, I've just hit the can draw equal to false. So let's hit save and run. Let's not hit save and run. We need to actually uh, use these methods. So hit floor and hit wall. We'll run those just after our update. Put them here. Hit floor and hit wall. So after we've calculated, uh, we run the checks and then continue. So you place them at the end of your update. Let's hit save and run. So we fired the cannonball, following a trajectory. And the moment of truth, will it hit and stop in the Y direction? It's done that. It's uh, still got a bit of physics and energy going up in the X direction. That will soon run out. When it begins to fall back down to earth under our Accelerate and accelerated value, I think it was minus five pixels a second. It's going to take some time. And will it stop? Great. And the looping has stopped. Now, this simulation is running at, if you go into your game loop activity, is running at 25 frames a second. But what if your Android activity is interrupted? What if we had five frames a second? What effect would that have on the physics? Let's hit save and run. So activity lifecycle interruptions are uh, unavoidable, and uh, this frame rate isn't very pretty. How does that affect our physics? Uh, and it hasn't worked. The ball has gone straight through the wall. The detect function has failed. The, the hit collision detection function has failed. And for this simple simulation, you can see that your frame rate or any interruption to your frame rate will have a massive effect on your gameplay. And this is why it's important for us to make sure that we separate uh, the physics and enforce this underlying clock, small dt, for our physics simulation component of our animation. And I'll show you how to do that in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.